Okay, this is the first of several video lectures for Introduction to Criminal Justice Bridge Valley Community Technical College uh, Tuesday night class. Um, I'm going to be lecturing some, some things that will be ancillary to chapters uh, 4 through 6 in your, uh, in your textbook on policing. So uh, we've already talked about chapter 5. I want to lecture chapter 6 here in these videos because I think um, this is a little more technical and the more interesting stuff for class I'd like to say for um, the following week. Not this week, which is spring break, but the following week. So please take good notes on this. Please treat these videos as if you were in class. Um, I don't have a template for this lecture, so you'll have to get some good notes. I'll leave this video up so you'll be able to refer to it. Uh, I am going to spot check your notes on this. Uh, when we meet again in a couple of weeks. So please make sure that you take notes on this. Uh, very important. Okay, uh, policing issues and challenges. This goes along with chapter 6 in your textbook. The police at times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and that the public are the police. Um, there are several issues confronting uh, contemporary policing in our country, and we're going to go through each of these uh, issues and challenges that are faced by police officers and administrators. I know in this class there are more than several of you who want to be police officers, and I think this chapter specifically for you all is, is really, really important. We're going to talk about police personality and culture. We're going to talk about corruption and integrity the dangers of police work, police use of force, racial profiling, police civil liability, and also policing in a multicultural society. So these are the major issues and challenges that face police officers today. Let's start with police personality and culture. Police officers learn what is considered appropriate police behavior from other police officers, typically from those officers who have been working in the field for some time. Hopefully not so much from the media and from television and movies. Um, through this process of what's called informal socialization, they learn to become what is called streetwise. Um, over time, officers will develop what's called the police working personality. Now, there is some debate as to whether the police personality is something that exists and attracts a certain type of individual, or if the individual develops his or her police personality in response to the demands of being a police officer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So what is personality, first of all? We, we all have personality, or personality features. So when we're asking the question, what is personality, whether we want to be police officers or not, regardless of what aspect of the criminal justice system you want to work within, you have a personality. We're talking about the characteristics or attributes that make you unique. So if you want a nice, tidy definition of personality, we're, we're talking about an individual's characteristic pattern of thinking, feeling, and acting. Uh, personality features are generally stable over time. They're consistent for the most part. Uh, we all have ways that we tend to think about certain things. Uh, some of us may think more optimistically about things. Others may be more pessimistically. Uh, some of us are prone to feeling anger or upset over certain things. Others of us may be more prone to feeling happiness or joy. And then acting or behaviors. Uh, we tend to behave in very specific ways based on our environments, based on our previous experiences, etc. And all of these things make up our personality. Personality traits, these are enduring patterns of perceiving, relating to, and thinking about the environment and oneself that is shown in a wide range of social and personal contexts. When we talk about different personality traits, and, and I don't want to turn this into a psychological lecture of personality, but to give you an idea, of what we're talking about. Uh, we could be speaking of things such as, or traits such as introversion versus extroversion, athletic versus not athletic, uh, musical ability versus mechanical ability. Um, we could go on and on and on. And again, we're going to start to see that police work and the police personality 
maybe attracts a specific type of person who already possesses specific personality traits. Or perhaps they develop as police officers go in relation to the environment. So, the police working personality, this is a, another important definition for you to have in your notes. All aspects of the traditional values and patterns of behavior evidenced by police officers who have been effectively socialized into the police subculture. Characteristics of the police personality often extend into the personal lives of law enforcement officers as well. So there's also research that suggests that regardless of whether this police personality quote unquote is learned or whether it attracts a specific type of person to the field, often that police personality type kind of spills over or bleeds over into their personal lives as well. And there are reasons for that that, that we can discuss in class and somewhat on, on this video lecture series as well. So, we have different components of police personality. You don't really necessarily have to know what all of these mean as far as having a definition in your notes. But these are general features or personality traits, if you will, that a lot of police officers either have or develop. Authoritarian. This is a component of the police personality that a police officer must have. At times they have to be able to tell people what to do. They have to be able to direct and lead and push people in certain in certain directions, whether it's some of their own in uniform or uh, civilians. Dogmatic. They have to be very precise in terms of how they follow procedure and follow rules and statutes. Uh, individualistic. Uh, they have to be very um, very self-sufficient in a lot of ways and efficient. They have to, to get things done in a timely fashion uh, and in a clean fashion. Um, police officers are often prejudiced. They're just like the rest of us. They have their biases and their prejudices. And the important thing for police officers, as with any professional or any human being for that matter, who works with other people, is to be able to identify and at least suspend or realize what those prejudices or biases are. Police officers get, I think, a lot of negative press, and I think they get a bad rap for, for being prejudiced uh, against certain types of people. We hear a lot about racial profiling, which we'll talk about later and toward the end of these video lecture series. Um, but police officers have the same prejudices and biases often that the rest of us have. Um, so we'll talk more about that. Cynical and suspicious. They're often guarded and suspicious when they're dealing with people because they're used to dealing with criminals. They're used to being lied to. They're used to being deceived uh, because suspects and criminals will, will do these things. They can be insecure in their interpersonal relationships and with some of the decisions they make. Uh, police officers have to be honorable. They're often in, in situations where they are, where it is pressed upon them to do the right thing and to follow rules and procedures without much oversight or, or overhead, if you will. They tend to be more conservative with their political views and ideologies. Um, they tend to be hostile at times. And again, working with suspects and with criminals and with people who are often not trying to abide by the rules or laws of society, you can see how this personality trait may develop. Loyalty and also secrecy. Um, they are sworn to secrecy and confidentiality in much of the same ways that myself as a psychologist am sworn to, to ethical confidentiality or secrecy. And again, these features can spill over into, into personal life. I'll end the first lecture series with this slide right here as you're, as you're making notes. There appear to be at least two sources of police personality. Again, this is important. I've already said this once, and I'll kind of say it again to end the first video lecture. First, components of the police personality that we've talked about here. Components of the police personality already exist, and it simply draws some people into police work. I I've heard a lot of experts in criminal justice say, well, you know, you get a certain type of person. I hear it with correctional officers and that kind of work as well. You, know, you get a certain kind of person who wants to do this, a person who's conservative, they're macho, um, they're, you know, they're very loyal, they're hardworking, uh, they abide by the rules, uh, but they also have um, issues with control um, and so forth and so forth. Maybe, maybe not. 
The second source of the police personality. Aspects of the police personality, again, can be attributed to socialization into the police subculture. So anybody who goes into police work, some may be more passive, some may be more aggressive, and research shows that there are some individuals who go into police work who tend to be more passive, more aggressive, and not as controlling in, inter in interpersonal relationships. But by virtue of working as a police officer and working in the field, they adapt these personality traits for survival, if nothing else, professional survival. We'll call that the end of this first part. Thanks.